Hello again, everybody, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two, where my partner, Art Kirsch, and I are with the doctor, the lovely Dr. Liz Lister. Hi, Dr. Liz. Hi. Hi, Dr. Liz. A question for you. I know that we speak about a lot of uh, topics, uh, hormonal issues and, and beyond uh, for both men and women, but the vast majority of practices, I understand it, are for women who are in menopause or having the kinds of issues that uh, women face in that area, uh, because it's uh, it, maybe it's the one that uh, is most talked about by any group who are seniors uh, and women have been talking about it for years. So are there special things that uh, you uh, uh, do research on or uh, are there latest up to date data on things that are affecting women that you can share with us? Yes, absolutely. So there's always ongoing studies around the world. In the United States, our FDA influence has a huge influence on how women in menopause uh, can have their symptoms treated and can also have hormones replenished to have optimal health. Uh, we had a huge setback. We've talked about this here in the past. A big, big setback a little over 20 years ago with the Women's Health Initiative. It made everybody afraid of hormone therapy. Luckily for women in the United States, women in menopause have an organization that is, they're just doing a better and better job advocating for women in menopause. That is, of course, their reason for being is called the North American Menopause Society, or NAMS. We call it NAMS for short. So I'm a member of NAMS. A lot of doctors are. Those of us who have a special interest and a special expanded patient population uh, in this wonderful time of life, we follow the NAMS position statements very closely. Of course, when the Women's Health Initiative came out, they issued a position statement saying hormone, and, and they reiterated the findings of the WHI against hormone therapy, which was very, very unfortunate for women. Other areas and doctors in other countries around the world, they were aware of the flaws in that study, but it's taken us a while to catch up. The So the NAMS issues a position statement about every five years. The most recent one was last year in 2022. So I thought it would be interesting and useful to just give you some of the highlights, especially the important updates since 2017. That was the prior position statement and uh, lots of good news in the new position statement that came out in 2022. Okay. Some of the highlights. First, I'll tell you some of the things that stayed the same. They both acknowledged and continue to support the fact that hormone therapy is the most effective treatment for women who are having what we call vasomotor symptoms hot flashes, night sweats, temperature dysregulation. That's the technical term. A lot of women will simply describe it as, I'm the only one who thinks it's warm in here and everybody else has their jacket on. So yeah. temperature dysregulation and hormone <laughs> therapy is the most effective way to address that. The other condition that women experience in menopause is referred to as genitourinary syndrome of menopause, or more simply, vaginal dryness. Loss of elasticity of the vagina and the base of the bladder. Hormone therapy is the most effective way to treat it. There are non-hormonal ways, but hormone therapy or HT is still the most effective way to treat it. And also last but not least, both of these position statements, this is a fact that we know, we learned it decades, over the last few decades, that HT, hormone therapy, is the most, it, 
it prevents bone loss and it prevents bone fracture. So these are very, very important for doctors to be aware of and for women to keep in mind. And now that is important because hormone therapy, as you pointed out in the beginning, is has had its uh, ups and downs, its, its reputation. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, has That's had right. its ups and downs. Um, That's right. In fact, I, I remember hormone therapy was the, there was a question mark. I don't remember the name, the the results of That's the study, right. but there was a question mark of its connection to cancer, to breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And we've talked about that Women's Health Initiative, that WHI study, a few times. So we know things that a lot of doctors didn't already know. So this new 2022 NAMS position statement does a couple of important things. It clearly states that the benefits of hormone therapy outweigh the risks for women under age 60 and if they're within 10 years of going into menopause. This was not in their previous position statement. So a lot of doctors were operating under the old information that you could only benefit under very, very limited circumstances. So they expanded that and they made it as a very clear statement. Also, this position statement is much stronger in its support for younger women who go into menopause. So young women, either premature ovarian failure, if it's under age 40, or early menopause, which is what I went through at age 43. So age 40 to 45 is called early menopause. This position statement is a much stronger recommendation in favor and support of hormone therapy to support our bones as well as other aspects of our health. Now, of course, we know, uh, having talked to you for years now, that you are a huge proponent and a, a, a proponent and expert in hormone therapy. So we know that it's not just quote hormone therapy. It is That's right. the quality of your care. It is the balancing of the right hormones. It's finding the right levels. It's it's a complicated as our bodies are complicated, it's a complicated uh, procedure to find what the right hormone level is and which hormones Mm -hmm. for any individual. That's right. That's exactly right. That's why it's so fortunate that this 2022 NAMS position statement acknowledged some things that we already knew. The three of us here in this YouTube podcast, we already are aware of a few facts that this position statement acknowledged. First of all, that using hormones transdermally, the transdermal route of administration is better than oral administration of hormones. It, of course, they're always gonna use equivocating language. So they say seems to lower, but yeah. it does lower the risks of blood clots and stroke. We already knew this, but this new position statement went through the data and affirms it more strongly. Another fact that we already knew is that the timing of starting hormone therapy matters. When women start hormone therapy closer to when they're going into menopause, they're going to have better long-term outcomes. One more is to your point of breast cancer, which is women's number one fear of using hormone therapy based on that old study. This position statement affirmed that the breast cancer risk is not increased in the short term. They had to qualify it, but they at least said it very clearly, breast cancer risk not elevated, at least in the short term, meaning the first 10 years, and that estrogen alone, they use the word may, But the data shows that estrogen alone, so women who had had hysterectomies and were not given the progestin, women only on estrogen have a decreased risk of breast cancer. 
So it's very exciting to those of us who already knew these facts yeah. to have a mainstream big organization such as the North American Menopause Society affirm in such strong terms what we already knew that HT is safe and effective for women to yeah. use in menopause in order to feel good. Well, that's good. That's good because um, it's such an important thing, such an important therapy for really all women. It just depends on timing, you know, in your life. Um, and it's good to have this organization because, you know, all organizations have to be careful of what they say. They can't, right. they're, they're very cautious about making a rule that sounds like it's, you know, a, a, yeah. a law of nature, you know, and, and they have to be careful. But it's good to see that they've progressed and that they're catching up with folks like yourself who are experts in the field dealing with it every day and know the facts. So uh, exactly. I'm pleased to hear that. Yeah, exactly right. And there were two last points that I'd like to leave us with that were very exciting to see in a official position statement like this. The first was for breast cancer survivors. Again, this is information that those of us who have expertise in this area were aware of. So it's so exciting to see it validated in this very important format. And that is for breast cancer survivors who are having that GSM, the genitourinary syndrome of menopause, the vaginal dryness, the pain with intercourse, the difficulty with their bladder, urine leakage. They, they use the word appears to be safe, which is good enough for me. I'm happy they said it, that it's safe to use local direct treatment to those tissues to help with those symptoms. And they actually said, greatly increases the quality of life. Oh, sure. so, so important. I have dear friends going through this themselves where it got to the point where they couldn't be intimate with their partners and to be able to have that back in their lives yeah. was very, very essential. And to have it validated that it's safe and will not increase their risk of recurrence of their breast cancer. How important is that? Sure. Last but not least, so important for women, those of us who are older, and that is that this statement removed the recommendation to discontinue hormone therapy due to age. There's no longer a need to routinely discontinue hormone therapy just due to age. I was getting women in my practice who said, I've been on hormones for 20 years. I feel fantastic. Everything's great. My health is great. My doctor says, just because I had this birthday, I need to come off my hormones. You have to help me. So of yeah. course, I'd be able to help them. But this statement made that hopefully a thing of the past. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. And of course, one last caution, I think, for everybody who's watching and that is, we're talking about hormone therapy, but it's a it's a fine detail that's important that you go to your doctor and determine that's right. the details, the the amount of therapy, the amount of dosage. That's and right. All that other stuff, because it's not. This is not over the counter. Hormone, and you're going to be fine. This is not over the counter. That's stuff. right. Yeah. Yes, indeed, indeed. Partnership yeah. with your person helping you with your health and your healthcare team. Thank you. Dr. Liz, thanks again. Great stuff. Great update. Important, I think, for uh, for the public to know, because after all, I'm not a member of NAMS. I would have never known any of this stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.